Spirometry is the most commonly used pulmonary function test and is performed using either a handheld device, called a spirometer, or a larger tabletop device. Spirometry helps to differentiate between patients with normal lung function, those with obstructive lung diseases such as asthma or COPD, and those with restrictive disease such as idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Start by measuring vital capacity with a relaxed but complete expiration from a position of full inspiration. This is known as the relaxed vital capacity or RVC and is a useful measure in patients who have a degree of airway collapse or in elderly patients. First, connect the mouthpiece and filter to the spirometer and use a clean nose clip. Ask the patient to breathe in as deeply as possible. Next, ask the patient to hold their breath just long enough to seal their lips around the mouthpiece. Finally, ask the patient to gently breathe all the way to empty, making sure to blow out for as long as possible. Allow the patient to recover for at least 30 seconds. Repeat the procedure until you have at least three acceptable readings, of which the best two are within 150 milliliters, or 5% of each other. Now, repeat the procedure, although this time with a forceful expiration. This time a nose clip is optional. As before, ask the patient to breathe in as deeply as possible. Then, place the mouthpiece in their mouth with a good seal. Alternatively, the patient can place the mouthpiece in their mouth first and breathe in through the mouthpiece to avoid any slow starts during this manoeuvre. Ask them to blow the breath out forcibly, as hard and as fast as possible, until there is nothing left to expel. This records the forced vital capacity, which is the total volume of gas forcibly exhaled from a position of full inspiration, and the FEV1, the volume of gas forcibly exhaled in one second. Keep encouraging the patient as they breathe out to make sure they empty their lungs completely. As before, allow the patient to recover for at least 30 seconds before repeating the procedure until you have three acceptable readings. Here is a good quality volume time graph of a patient with no pathology. There is a steep slope at the start with a plateau at the end of expiration. And here is a good quality flow volume loop of a patient who does not have pathology. This has a rapid start and a sharp peak with a smooth drop to a flow rate of zero. As well as looking at the shape of these graphs, the ratio of FEV1 to FVC is important. A fixed ratio of 0.7 or greater was previously used to define normal lung function. But some newer guidelines recommend comparing the ratio to the lower limit of normal, or LLN, for that patient. LLN values are becoming easily available through software built into spirometers. The results from the relaxed vital capacity manoeuvre can also be used if they are higher than those from the force manoeuvre. This is often the case in older patients or those with airway collapse. Patients with obstructive lung disease will have a limitation of flow on forced expiration. In these patients, you would expect to see a decreased FEV1 to FVC ratio of below the lower limit of normal for that patient, or less than 0.7. Here we can see a volume time graph for a patient with an obstructive pattern. The FEV1 is reduced, and a plateau was only reached after several seconds of expiration. And here we can see a flow volume loop for a patient with an obstructive pattern. There is a scooped out appearance. Asthma and COPD are the most common causes of airflow obstruction. In contrast to an obstructive pattern, a restrictive pattern is characterised by decreased total lung capacity. This results in both FEV1 and FVC being reduced, as we can see in this volume time graph. The FEV1 to FVC ratio will be normal, so above the lower limit of normal, or 0.7 or greater. However, with a restrictive pattern, the FVC is below the lower limit of normal.
Here, we can see a flow volume loop for a patient with a restrictive pattern. The shape of the curve is generally normal, but the loop is narrowed and the FVC is low because of the reduced lung volume. Causes of a restrictive pattern include idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, obesity, deformities of the chest wall, and neuromuscular disease. There are four possible patterns that are often seen in spirometry, including mixed disorder and a non-specific pattern. For more explanation on these specific patterns, see our full course on BMJ Learning.